We used to play Elvis on the record or um, listen to radio where they had music, Beach Boys or whatever. So we are used to American music or even Latin music or Irish folk song or Duke Ellington tunes. You know, we were used to that. My brother entered college and he joined uh, what they call light music club in college. Just about every college, universities would have them. And they usually have, you know, country band or bluegrass band or full jazz band, modern jazz or Latin music, Hawaiian bands. Wow. Your school is cooler than mine. (laughs) (laughs) All of them. I mean, just about every college Mm -hmm. has them. Mm. And my brother joined the country band. But when you're a freshman in college, the seniors get the priority. They sing and they play. And then junior and sophomore. And when you're a freshman, you carry the instruments for the seniors and watch them practice. If they go on a tour, they're the roadies. Right. And No matter how good you are. Yeah. Oh, that's well, my brother gets to sing one song, you know, every mm-hmm. now and then. <laughs> and also carrying the big amps and steel guitar and drums and amps. And, and they don't travel by car. They get on a train, so they got two minutes to load or unload, and it's a lot of work. And my brother didn't like that. And by the time he the band disbanded, he had found a music called bluegrass, where each member carry one instrument. And no amp. No amp. Yeah, the lazy people's instruments. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he liked that. So he switched to it, and he played guitar. And he so that was the one thing they didn't have at the college, at the, the college, bluegrass band right. at that time. Yeah. So he named the band Bluegrass Travelers and Bluegrass Rumblers, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And they were really good. So you're, you're siblings and you all played music. Did your parents also play music? And what did they think about this bluegrass music that you guys were starting to do? They didn't like it, but they liked the music, mm-hmm. yes. But they didn't like bluegrass per se, I think. Well, they didn't want me to play music full time. What I, parent does? <laughs> right. Especially, you know, I was saying, okay, I'm going to the States and play music full time. And they're like, oh. <clears throat> but after I settled down here, you know, they thought I was doing all right. Mm-hmm. We formed a group in 67 and we played in Kobe, Japan. We were just a bunch <clears throat> of young kids, three, four, five years old. <laughs> Right. Of course you were. <laughs> because this was 1967, and um, Dick Freeland, that I was talking about earlier, he invited us to the States in 1970, so we toured the States in 71. You guys were really fun to watch on stage because you do all sorts of funny, zany stuff up there. What what kind of stuff did you do? We played instruments. And behind oh, behind your head. head and stuff? Yeah. yeah. And we did... A lot of funny things, but also we were... Like what? Um, you know the tune called How Far to Beam Blo- How Far to Little Rock? Mm-hmm. Do, 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 yeah, do. it's Arkansas Traveler, but they stop and they tell jokes. Mm-hmm. We did that at Bean Blossom, you know, first stage, but we, we told the jokes in Japanese. And then laughed. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, no one else does it that way. Right. Yeah. yeah. Were they actually funny jokes in Japanese that you were telling, or was it just translated the same? Stupid, corny jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I gave you the DVD from um, Japan last tour. Uh-huh. Um, and that's, that's this, this tour yeah. right here. Um, you won't get all the jokes. Music-wise... Well, because they're in Japanese? Yeah. Yeah, I probably won't get all of the joke that way, yeah. <laughs> but um, um, my brother, Josh, translated the song, mm-hmm. I Cried Again. You know the song. Jimmy Martin did it. Mm-hmm. And he translated it into Japanese, and he's saying, I mean, he came up with three verses and a chorus. But 
we pretend like what would have happened if Jimmy Martin was Japanese? <laughs> <laughs> so Josh acts like Jimmy Martin, but he is singing in Japanese. Uh-huh. And, you know, sub, sub trying to play like J.D. Crow. And a hard, a hard drinking, yeah. hard living Japanese uh, singer songwriter right. from a rural areas. area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, lifting the instruments up mm -hmm. and, and with big G run and people enjoy that mm -hmm. I mean these days a lot of bands here and in Japan are more like watch me watch me I'm good I'm good you know I'm so cool Bluegrass 45 all of us are really really how should I say we act crazy stupid it's entertainment, you know. It's you're supposed to be an entertainer. It's good mm -hmm. to be entertaining. Yeah. And mm. the more mistakes we make, the funnier the show get. Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing you can do wrong then. It's all good, yeah, right? It's, uh, music and singing and playing and timing all that is not that great. But we know everybody who came to the show went home smiling. Right. They all had a good time. Yes. They got their money's worth. Right. Not they didn't watch us, you know, doing fancy legs or fancy tricks, but they had a great time. Yeah, I can't wait to see that, actually. That'll be really fun. Too bad that you cannot get all the jokes, but... I'll get the gist of them indirectly, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll know it was funny, depending on how many people laugh. <laughs> uh, I mean, sometimes I'm looking at it, and I didn't get it. Some people are laughing, and I didn't get it. And I had to stop and... And you're in the band. I'm in the band. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> jokes are not the same every time. Mm. So it's like, what did he say? Why is he laughing? Oh, oh, I got it. I mean, two months later, I get it. Right. Oh, that must have been a really good one. Yeah. I think there's a story about the first time you got to play Bill Monroe's mandolin. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was there. Eric Weisberg, uh, Peter Owen, Bill Monroe. It was in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And in the basement, they set up a PA system and everybody played. But Tex Logan came up and said, Hey, Blue Guys 45, are you guys ready to play? Be like, yes, sir. But 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 our instruments in the car, and Dick went to take a nap, and we don't know where he is. And you don't have the keys. We don't have the key. Right. And uh, Dick said, "Oh, we'll get your instruments." And I got Bill Monroe's man Len. And Just handed to you, and you're like, ah. Oh my God! Right. right. <laughs> and my brother Josh. In the middle of the set, he goes, are there any requests? And you, what are you thinking when he said that? I was not thinking nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but since Mr. Monroe was there, nobody spoke up. So he spoke up. Can mm -hmm. you guys do, guess what? What? Rawhide? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm cheating, I know the story. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. So, I'm ready to kill my brother. Right. Because what he's done is he's just asked you to play Bill Monroe's signature song on Bill Monroe's instrument in front of him. Yeah. And now, how is Bill Monroe's mandolin for you to play? I mean, it's you get used to your own instrument. Oh, yes. And it was terrible. <laughs> the space between the first string and the second string was narrower than the space between the first two strings. I guess he used to it. He he was used to it. Right. But I was not. And it was hard and I had to struggle but mm -hmm. we did play. We and how did. was the action? I don't remember that. Oh, the okay. spacing was the thing I remember. Yeah, it was weird to play. And I was so nervous. I mean all these people, you know, Peter Owen and Grisman, everybody's watching. All your heroes are watching. No one but your heroes. Ah. So how did the song go? Did it work out? Did you sound awesome, or was it like, ugh, at least it's over? Later on, like 10 years ago, I found a tape. I got the tape, but section is missing. 
and rawhide is not on there. Ah. I wish I could find a tape with the whole thing, but but I got the picture. Right, right. Yeah, that's a great story. He playing Monroe's mandolin, and he's watching us. He was a character. He was a hard person to talk to if you didn't know him. But it's because he was a shy person, very shy. I mean, looking at him on stage, you know, what's wrong with this guy? But when he gets off the stage, he did his own, he did his part. So he's like, okay, I'm on my time now. So if you go up and tell, start telling him how great he sounded, he didn't care. Mm. I went to Japan twice mm -hmm. with the seldom scene mm -hmm. in 85 and 90, 90, 91, I think. You kind of led that, right? You kind of led I them helped out them. there. Yeah. I was there. Road manager, sound man, tour guide, translator, and something else. I had five jobs. <laughs> Cultural liaison, I'm sure. <laughs> it was funny. I bet that had some interesting stories, and and I think and did they all eat the Japanese food, and did they? How did they Sometimes. handle the different like their first? John is a hard person to <laughs> feed because he would have like seven eggs in the morning. He would order, you know, whole bacon, intense strips, and then he will have it done, well done, and then he will take the grease off, putting one part and the good part here. Oh, the fat. Fat, fat on this side and good part here, and then give the good part to somebody else, and he put Eat the, the, fat. the yeah, put the grease on the toast and then put salt and stuff and then eat it. A little cholesterol sandwich. <laughs> um, but he is a very mm -hmm. caring person. He was a very caring person. You go to his house and watch a football or something, right? Every five minutes, hey, I care, you need another drink? You want a sandwich? Right. I mean, he is a very caring person. I mean, that kept the seldom scene together for many years, mm. you know. He, I remember, like, uh, I think it was Lou. No, it was not Lou, I forgot. Anyway, they go on a tour and they travel together mm -hmm. and then they'll split the expense and, and Duffy would go, okay, uh, Mike, I owe you 2,050 cents. And then uh, next time they have a gig, here you go, Mike, 2,050 cents. You know, he took care of the business. Right, right. He took care of everybody. Right. Um, we were in Japan traveling on the Shinkansen blood train. Mm hmm And we, on the train, um, waiters and waitresses would come around with a cart. Sometimes they sell rice crackers and tea and lunch box and whatever. Mm -hmm. One cart went by and John goes, that was ice cream, wasn't it? I don't know how he figured it out, but he did. It was ice cream. Mm -hmm. Girl was selling ice cream. So he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. So John buys everybody ice cream. Mm -hmm. It's a tiny little ice cream. It's a Japanese portion, you know, it's right. this big. And I opened up, started eating. John got up, got his bag down. I'm like, what are you doing? You're not eating the ice cream? He gets this thing out from his bag. Hershey's chocolate syrup. <laughs> and then he passes it on to everybody. You had to be prepared for emergencies, you know? I think that was his day drink. He put ice and chocolate syrup, syrup and water. I think that was his during the day drink. In 1971, Bluegrass 45 first came to Bean Blossom, right? Right. And you, you'd been hearing about all these bluegrass greats and legends, and then all of a sudden, bam, there you were 
with them and you were <laughs> probably trying to talk to them and jam with them. I mean, we pulled into the gate and here is Mr. Monroe. Right, you're all like really? wide-eyed and... Oh my God, right? And then you walk around and here's Jimmy Gutro with Bill Emerson and Charlie Waller and Jimmy Martin, Rob Stanley and Curly Red Klein and Lester flat singing, then Bill Monroe comes and they sung for the first time in like 30 years, you know. They were not talking to each other before. Uh -huh. That was the first time they sung together in many, many years. And were they talking to you guys? I mean, did you, were you able to interact and play with them at all? We were scared and shit less. We were so mm -hmm. scared. I mean, our English was not that good. Mm -hmm. and. After we played, people want to talk to us. And I'm walking, and everybody wants to talk to me. I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody. Right. They talk so fast. They have accents. They don't understand, you know. Yeah. And I guess, you know, as you were first learning how to play, and, and, and still now, I mean, who, who have been, you think, some of the most influential mandolin players in terms of, like, really pushing into new material and doing new things with mandolins? Well, you know... Sam always, well, start with John. Bill Monroe, I just didn't get it. Mm. It was, didn't sync with me. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I heard John Duffy, it's like, it made sense to me what he played. Mm -hmm. it, he had a little more theory than Monroe did. And he was classically trained somewhat, right? The opera, his parents or something? Not really. He just learned how to project, how mm -hmm. to use the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. But um, he didn't study, but probably he heard it, so it was in his head. From his parents, yeah. right? Yeah. It was, his dad was a um, Washington opera singer, I think. And Jethro was just amazing. He still amazes me. By Jethro Burns. Jethro Burns. What mandolin player doesn't know which Jethro we're talking about, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> funny, you know, like Bill, Jethro, Jesse. Right, Jesse McReynolds. Yeah, Bela, or, you know, some people get away with first name. Right, right. <laughs> I think a name like John often you have to yeah. put a last name, but yeah, Jethro's and Jesse's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so who else? Anyone else that you could think of that no. you think's been really influential? I in mean, Amanda? Sam has Sam been Bush. my hero for many, many years. Right. He wrote a nice, nice liner notes on my CD. Uh, he saw us Blue Girls Forty Five in nineteen seventy one and. He thought we started new grass. <laughs> oh, really? Nice. Many years ago, he said, "You guys did take five, and you guys freaked me out, man." 